Hey, good people, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of NextLevelGuitar.com. Hope all is going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. Thanks for joining me today, and today I have a little video on five top things that I keep on my desk that I feel are helping me to become a better guitar player, a better musician. So I want to go over my musical workstation and why I feel these things are important. And maybe these types of things can help you also in your guitar and musical journey. So I'm also going to take you around my workstation, show you what it looks like. Generally, I like to keep things pretty clean and neat. And it's not, not because I'm overly anal or anything like that, but when it comes to a desk, personally, I'm not a big fan of a messy desk with things piled all over it and whatnot. That just doesn't work for me because when I start to have tons and tons of papers and tons and tons of things that need to be taken care of, it's hard for me to stay focused on a task. You know, it's hard for me to stay focused on a task where everything around me is saying, handle me, handle me, handle me, handle me, handle me, right? So I know there's a saying, you know, a messy desk is, is the sign of a sane mind. But for me, what works better is maybe a little bit of a mess, but I keep, kind of keep things pretty clean. And before we get rocking on the five things, um, if you have a second, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us to keep bringing the content, right? Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you keep on your musical desk. You know, your comments also uh, help other people who are other players, other students who are reading the comments, you know. Let me know the things you like. Let me know how you like this video, what video lessons or gear reviews you'd like to see coming up. Also, if you have a question, question, put it in uh, uh, below. We do regular Q&A sessions here on our channel. Um, if you'd rather email the question in, if you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. You can email me your questions at the next level guitar at yahoo.com and be sure and put question for David in the subject line. The first thing I keep on my desk that really helps me is a metronome. All right, and I just use this really basic, simple Boss uh, DB30. It's a Dr. Beat 30 metronome. And playing with a metronome, practicing with a metronome is just an essential tool, in my opinion, for any practicing guitarist. Playing in time and having your rhythm solid is, is so critical. Because we're playing rhythm guitar so much and leads are so small, um, your lead guitar playing is really only ever as good as your rhythm playing. I personally like this device because I could change, it's it's not just in 4-4, I could change it to any timing I want, because I write a lot, and I use it a lot for my songwriting. Um, so I could change the timing if I'm writing in 5, if I'm writing in 9, if I'm writing in 11, whatever it is, this metronome could do it. I could also uh, change the sound of the click so it changes for the 1. I like knowing where that 1 is. Um, so this has some features on it that are pretty nice. It also has a tap tempo, which is cool because I just need to tap out the tempo to get an idea of ballpark where I want to be. Um, so this one, battery powered, it's really nice because I can grab it fast. That's the thing, a theme you'll find with a lot of stuff on my desk. It's stuff I need to have at my disposal very quickly so I could put it to use fast without having to load up pages, without having to turn things on and dial up sounds, right? Quick, easy, fast. Um, there's also some great metronomes online and I use some of those too. But the thing is, you know, sometimes I have my computer off. Sometimes I think it's important as players or as songwriters or as you know, guitarists that are studying and we're trying to constantly get our playing to the next level, sometimes we have to turn off the distractions, turn off the phone, turn off the computer, and just really concentrate uh, at the tasks at hand, whether it be the practice, whether it be the exercises, whether it be songwriting. Um, no matter what your guitar goals are, sometimes we have to kind of, you know, really cancel out all the distractions. Um, so, um, I don't want to have to go online to use a metronome. This one works really well. Another thing I keep on my desk is a log book, you know, like a, a scheduler, you know, and this really helps me um, because, you know, in order to make things happen, sometimes it's important you have to write them down. So I'll write down, practice, you know, practice these songs, practice for upcoming rehearsal, you know, practice exercises. I think it's so important to ensure that we meet our goals, that we schedule things, right? And if you're, I find for me, and I think for a lot of my students, when they schedule it, it has a greater propensity for it to happen. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, I write lots of stuff down and then I cross it off as I do it, whether it be appointments, whether it be students, practice songs for rehearsal tonight, you know, lunch meetings, rehearsals, you know, dinners, whatever, business meetings. I think you'll find if you, schedule your practice sessions 
and then be very diligent about it. Keep a logbook. Also in my logbook, I'll put things I'm working on, um, things that uh, I feel in my playing that need more attention, things I really want to stress, focus on. Again, I got to write it down. Writing it down, you'll find it'll have a much greater chance of it happening coming to fruition versus not writing it down. And if you're a visual learner and you need to look at like things like scales diagrammed out on paper, I could totally help you with that. Click on the link below. I'll put a, a link to my free ebook where I go over like 29 scales and diagram them all out on paper, soloing strategies, uh, major minor key, more lessons, exercises, all kinds of stuff. It's a great reference ebook and I'll send it to you with a video lesson. Video lesson and ebook for free. It's a great little study aid and a great little practice aid. Click on that link. I'll send it to you for free from Next Level Guitar. Another thing on my desk that I feel really helps me in my guitar journey and, and helps me becoming a better overall guitarist, musician, is my DAW, my uh, digital audio workstation, my DAW, right? And, and what that is, is that's your system, if you do home recording, of all the components that get the job done. For instance, I have here a Steinberg UR22 interface, so I could plug my guitar into the interface and then right, right from there, USB into my computer. I have an iMac, so that's part of my doll. I have my KRK Rocket 5 monitors. You really don't need a lot. You need a computer, you need an interface, uh, a, a good set of monitors, right? I also use a MIDI keyboard. So when, when I want to trigger sounds or play some keyboards, add that to my music. I use, you'll, you'll need software and there's all kinds of recording software out there. I like Logic X, right? Uh, another Apple product, but it's, it's inexpensive. I think you can get it for about $199. The reason I think it makes players better is, number one, you'll learn a skill, right? Uh, you'll learn a skill of creating music and recording it which is always nice. So you're going to learn about capturing sounds. You're going to learn about miking, you know, whether it be cabinets or instruments or running direct and mixing. And although the learning curve is steep, you know, it's really cool because that's a skill that you will bring to the table and so many other, it just funnels out into so many other areas you're playing, as well as you should be recording yourself, right? Record some of yourself playing. If you've never done that before, you're going to be in for a big shock because when you record yourself, it's going to pick up every little thing, every little nuance, every little, you know, where you're not muting all the strings, every little guitar dink and hit, and you're going to hear it all and you're going to have to go back and clean all that up in your playing. So it kind of forces is you to really put a microscope to your playing right and get it super clean and you really hear the nuance and then when you go back and listen to yourself playing even if it's just soloing over jam tracks you can really kind of critique yourself it's a really great tool another thing that i think is really important and it's it's technically not on my desk but it's right next to my desk is a guitar stand right i always have and i have a st just a simple guitar stand um so i can keep guitars in the rooms that I'm in most. I never pack my guitars away. I never put them in cases and like store them under the bed or anything like that. I leave them out. And I think if you leave your guitar out, especially in the room that you're in most, you're going to have a much more uh, uh, opportunity to just pick it up when you have that spare five minutes, right? When you have some time before your dinner's ready, when you have some time, you know, before you go to work or before you put the kids to bed or before you go to school or after school or whatever, Grab your guitar, get 10 minutes in, do your, do some exercises, grab your guitar, you know, work on your chord changes, work on, you know, learning scales, whatever. Leave your guitar out. It's so important as opposed to, you know, putting it in its case, keeping it under the bed or in the closet. You're not going to want to pull it out as much. So, you know, whatever room you're in the most, have a guitar stand or have a guitar stand in a couple rooms or some wall hangers if you don't want to leave your guitar on uh, on the on the floor so to speak maybe you have some pets you're afraid of it getting knocked over get a wall hanger and screw it into the studs in the wall and hang it it's nice too because the guitars are kind of like you can make it look like artwork right guitars are works of art anyway so you can display them but it's so important to have to just be able to grab it grab it and go whatever it is you're working on that's an inexpensive thing there's all kinds of guitar stands on the market you know you could pick up something you know for under 20 bucks and it really makes a difference. The fifth thing I like to keep my desk is my phone. I have an iPhone and I'll tell you why. Although there are times when, like I mentioned before, where I will turn it off because I don't want to be disturbed, I found that being able to record something instantly, that fast, is very important to save ideas. If you're into songwriting at all, 
whether it be, you know, whether you're an acoustic player, an electric player, whether you're writing chord progressions or riffs, you know that uh, you've had this happen where you'll come up with something really cool, a minute later, boom, it's gone, never to be found again. You have to have something very quick to be able to capture that, to capture that progression, that series of notes, that riff, whatever, that chorus, that verse, and you got to have it, and, and it's got to be able to to access it quickly. Now you could say, well, I have this computer here and I have this whole setup. That's true, but I still have to plug in. I still have to load it up, right? I still have to dial up a tone. I have to set up tracks. By then it's long gone. So what I do is I keep the phone and I just go to my um, camera and I just put it on video. And then I just put the thing on my leg and I play it. I don't have to have an amp. I don't have to have it anything, acoustic, electric, and it picks it up. Um, because it's recording the sound and that is enough for me to remember that lick to remember those that chord progression right so I think having a phone or some other type of personal recorder that you could just grab fast put it on your leg click record go and just to capture the idea doesn't matter what the tone is what sound what guitar you're using that that doesn't matter what matters is you capture the essence of the music that you're creating that's what's important. Uh, so you'll remember it, right? The phone is good because I have this with me. Usually, you know, it's in your pocket all day long, right? And if you have your guitar and you're out somewhere, you can capture something. You might not bring a personal recorder. That's why I like the idea of the phone. And most phones have some type of, you know, video on it where you can capture what you're doing. Other things that I have on my desk, you know, I have some things that I like to listen to. Like I have music that I find inspiring or you know, motivating, empowering. So I have a stack of CDs. You might say, well, why are you listening to CDs? Personally, I like buying CDs. I'll tell you why, and I'm not, I'm not being judgmental, and I'm not saying that my way is the best way or the only way, but I like buying CDs because I like giving, if I like the band or the artist, I like giving them my money. Right? I want to contribute to them as opposed to just renting the music like on Spotify. When you're doing the $10 a month on Spotify, that's, that's great. You know, it, it, it's great and it's convenient and, and everybody loves it. But the artists see very little of that. I want the artists to see as much as possible. So I like, and the other thing is I like physical products. See, once I have it, I, 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 I get, you know, whatever artwork I could see, you know, the packaging. I could read the lyrics if they include it. Or like, you know, the, this is a new Coheed and Cambria record, right? And they have all kinds of stuff in here. Um... That's kind of cool uh, that you don't get that experience when you just download it, right? As well as, you know, I, I want to have it because then if I want to put it on my iPod or if I want to put it on a computer, I could just rip it and put it on there. But at least I own it. I like owning the music as opposed to renting it. For me, I just it just works better for me. Um, and I want to help support the artist. That's why I still do it. Um, so what do I have here? So I keep a lot of stuff and I cycle through things that I find motivating and power. I got the new Coheed and Cambria. Uh, uh, I got Opeth, Damnation. Very, I like it. It's very different. It's more like an acoustic Opeth, which sounds recent. But then I have Opeth Watershed, you know. Great stuff. Uh, Porcupine Tree, one of my favorite progressive bands. A new Chevelle, Mastodon. Oh, an old Iron Maiden CD. Peace of Mind great record so surround yourself with things that are inspiring and motivating and that empower you right um, that'll help you along your guitar journey I hope some of these things will help you along your journey that you might want to try out if you have any questions like I said you could shoot me an email or put your questions below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and remember if you want a video lesson and a free ebook click on that link below I'll send it to you free from next level guitar stay tuned I got lots more killer lessons and content coming up Thank you so much for your support over the years. I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. Have fun uh, with your guitars and along your guitar journey. And remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care. Rock on.